Little bit of a weird one, this one, measuring the molar volume of a gas, because you know what? The molar volume of a gas in standard conditions is stated in the data sheet. But you know what? We need to look at the practical, how we actually figure that out. So we're going to use an example by reacting excess acid with calcium carbonate. In this example, then, we are just going to use a very straightforward reaction between excess acid and make sure it's in excess with calcium carbonate. So, of course, that's going to release a gas because it fizzes and releases CO2. The equation for this, 2HCl plus CaCO3 gives us calcium chloride, CaCl2, H2O, and carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is, of course, our gas, and we need to measure the volume of gas given off. On the left hand side here then we've got our equipment okay standard kind of boiling tube this is where a reaction is going to take place in here any gas that's given off co2 is actually going to fill or start filling this full inverted measuring cylinder okay so this is filled with water as the gas goes through then the water is displaced and we can measure the volume of gas given off by this reaction this is what we've got excess hydrochloric acid and a known mass of calcium carbonate in our boiling tube that's sealed airtight with a bung and then of course that gas will be delivered into this filled with water inverted measuring cylinder and like i said the gas comes through there bubbles through displaces the water and we can measure the volume of gas given off from the entirety of the reaction in terms of our method then First thing, ensure your acid is in excess. So whatever concentration and volume of acid you put into that boiling tube, make sure it's always more in terms of number of moles than calcium carbonate. Okay, so make sure there's plenty in there. Look at the stoichiometry. You might need to calculate it as part of an exam, but we need to make sure it's in excess. Why? Because we need the calcium carbonate to limit the reaction because later on we're going to be looking at the relationship between the mass of calcium carbonate put in there and the volume of carbon dioxide given off. All right. So we, in order to do that, it's got to be the calcium carbonate that dictates how much carbon dioxide is given off. So we, we want that limiting the reaction. Once we've made sure of that, we add a known mass of that calcium carbonate to the acid and measure the volume of carbon dioxide released on reaction completion. So we're not measuring how much is released over time or anything like that. We're just waiting for the reaction to go to completion and then checking out our measuring cylinder and finding out how much CO2 in terms of volume is actually produced. Once we've done our first one, all we need to do is set it up again and repeat. And we repeat this at least six times with different masses of calcium carbonate, but all the while ensuring that our acid is in excess. We want that calcium carbonate to run out and for the reaction to stop when the calcium carbonates run out. So we need to repeat this a good number of times, okay? By changing the mass of that calcium carbonate ever so slightly, you're only dealing with small masses here. And then, you know, like I said, making sure you jot those down in a results table. And what we can do is analyze those results then. Once we've got our results, in terms of analysis, what we need to do is plot a graph. Now, our graph, very straightforward. We've got two axes, of course. Our y-axis, that's what we're measuring. That's the volume of CO2 given off by each separate experiment. And we're plotting that against the mass of calcium carbonate we used in each of those experiments. Now, as of course, we'd expect the greater the mass of CaCO3 that we use, the greater the volume of CO2 is going to release, okay? Because it's that that's limiting the experiment. The more calcium carbonate we use, the greater the volume of CO2 released. We then go ahead and plot our results, okay? It's like we see, we see this positive correlation. And what we then need to do is just draw a straight line of best fit. Now that's got to come from the origin because of course, zero mass of calcium carbonate. If we don't put any calcium carbonate in, we're not gonna be producing any CO2. So it's gotta go through the origin. And what we can do is find that kind of line of best fit to tell us you know, what volume of CO2 is actually released when we add any mass of calcium carbonate. So that line of best fit will tell us that. Just to label that up there, this is our line of best fit through the origin. So how do we go about the calculation then? Well, first thing we do is we just pick a point on the line. Now I would suggest just finding a round mass of calcium carbonate. So don't pick a completely random number, pick something that's nice and rounded, maybe something like 0.2 grams. It depends on what masses you were using, of course, but just find a nice number to work with. That's my suggestion. 
Next step, we find the number of moles of calcium carbonate in that mass that you've chosen. Like I said, this can be anywhere on that straight line. So I'm using 0.2 grams. So number of moles of calcium carbonate is 0.2 divided by molar mass, which is 100.1. And that gives us 0.002 moles. Now at this point, we need to find out exactly how many moles of calcium carbonate was actually released, okay? So if we find out by stoichiometry, the number of moles of CO2 released, then you know we can find the molar mass. So if 0.002 moles of calcium carbonate was used, then it's a one-to-one -one stoichiometric relationship. So therefore we should have be releasing 0.002 moles of carbon dioxide. As I say then, stoichiometry is the second calculation you need to do or deduction you need to do. In this case, it's a one-to-one -one reaction between calcium carbonate and CO2. So 0.002 moles of CO2 were produced when we used 0.002 moles of calcium carbonate. So we know how many moles of CO2 we've got. We need to find the molar volume. So at this point, we need to use the graph to find the volume of CO2 that's given off at that mass. So I picked 0.2, I would pick that point on the graph, go up to the line and then across, and I would find out what volume of CO2 was released by that mass of calcium carbonate. So sticking to the same mass here. So for example, let's say it ended up as 45 centimeter cubed. Reading from my graph, that's where I got 45 centimeter cubed from. What we can say is then we've got two bits of information. We're saying that 0.002 moles of CO2 occupies 45 centimeters cubed. How can we find molar volume? Well, molar volume is essentially just saying, what volume does one mole take up? So if, if we know that one mole occupies 45 divided by 0 0.002, and that gives us 22,500 centimeters cubed. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is your molar volume. So there's three steps to this. One, find out you know, what number of moles of calcium carbonate you're going to be uh, using, okay, in terms of reading your graph. Second thing, stoichiometry, find out the uh, number of moles of CO2 that that actually produced. Once you know the number of moles of CO2, find out what volume that number of moles takes up and then find your molar volume. Your molar volume being the volume that one mole of gas occupies at this particular temperature, because it does change with temperature, okay? So the practical element of this, they could ask you to write about in the exam, but more likely is they're gonna give you some calculations and ask you, you know, how do you do this? How do you find the molar volume of a gas using this data that we've given you, okay? So know how to do the experiment, know the pitfalls of it, making sure your acid is in excess and so on and so forth. And of course, know how to calculate it using the analysis. The last thing I will say here, and it's really important, is about errors. Now, a big error, a big sticking point in this is actually your molar volume might be lower than expected. The reason will because as CO2 bubbles through the water here, CO2 is actually quite soluble. So some of that CO2 may dissolve in the water and doesn't come out as, as a measurement of gas up here. So that will affect your results. So if there's one major thing that's gonna affect your results here, it's CO2 dissolving in the water. So just be prepared because they do like asking that question, okay? So that's how you measure the molar volume of a gas.